let us uh, try and get a physical understanding of why a centrifugal pump is uh, not a good choice for uh, the value of Q and H that we had specified for this. It may be recalled uh, that um, the value of Q and H that was specified for this case was 5 meter head and 5 meter cube per second of water. Uh, so looking at the uh, flow rates here and the head, uh, it's apparent that uh, the particular requirement uh, calls for uh, low head and high flow rate. And that is actually the reason why a centrifugal pump is not a good choice. And uh, let us see why centrifugal pump is not a good choice for low head and high flow rate. So if you actually look at uh, a centrifugal pump, uh, the impeller of which is uh, shown here, uh, the flow enters the eye of the pump axially, but uh, when it flows through the impeller, it flows uh, in the radial direction. Of course, there is no axial component of velocity, which is why we say it's a radial flow machine, but there is a tangential component of velocity. Okay? No axial component, hence it's called a radial flow machine. And it is clear that um, in this case, the impeller width is uh, not very large. It cannot be very large. Uh, because of the basic fluid dynamic design and consequently the flow rates that it can handle is rather restricted but the head that it can develop is quite high because of the centrifugal action the purely radial motion and the centrifugal action uh, so the centrifugal pump is thus uh, ideally suited for high head but low discharge type of application and that is the reason why we find it to be uh, unsuitable for uh, low head and high flow rate applications such as this one. Now, if we want to increase the flow rate uh, through the centrifugal machine, uh, the only way to do this is to widen the blade passage or open up the blade passage. So when you open up the blade passage, for example, let's say by a moderate amount, then we end up with the geometry of the impeller that looks like this. What is that in this case, the uh, flow through the impeller is not uh, radial, but it has both radial component as well as an axial component, in addition to the tangential component that it already had. So the flow becomes highly three-dimensional, and this is called a mixed flow machine because it is uh, neither just radial, nor just axial, but has a combination of both radial and axial. So because we have opened up the uh, impeller blade passage, the flow rate uh, here is higher than what we see here. So this type of design is ideally suited for medium head and medium flow rate because there is still uh, 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 radial component uh, that is present in this design. Uh, the head that it can develop can still be reasonably uh, high, not as high as the purely radial flow machine uh, such as a centrifugal pump. So this can still develop uh, a reasonable amount of it. So it is ideally suited for medium head and medium discharge application. Okay. Uh, now, if you open it up further to increase the flow rate even more, then we end up with an axial flow pump like this. So this is a purely axial flow machine. There is no radial uh, component at all. Uh, so the fluid has an axial component and a tangential component in this case. And as you can see, the blade passage is quite wide. So this can develop uh, or this can handle a very high flow rate, but the head that is developed across uh, such a rotor is not very high. Okay, So this is ideally suited for low head and high flow rate uh, applications, the sort that we are looking for in this particular case. So for the values that we specified, uh, it becomes clear that an axial pump is probably the best choice. Okay. Although uh, this is not clear because these uh, descriptions are still only um, uh, qualitative. Okay? So what exactly do we mean by high, medium and low for head or for uh, a discharge? Is it one meter cube per second or five meter cube per second or one meter or 10 meter? That is not clear, but we can broadly classify them as high, medium and low. And the only way to actually uh, uh, make this uh, quantitative is to have or develop uh, a parameter that actually can relate these two quantities in a manner that is applicable across all three types of design. Okay? So before we turn to that, let us just uh, quickly uh, summarize some of the features of these types of machines, although we will not go into any of the details. 
just like what we did for uh, centrifugal machine, universal characteristics, uh, um, uh, namely CP versus CQ and CH versus CQ, uh, can also be developed for mixed flow machines. Uh, again, for different impeller diameters, RPM, and different types of fluids. And similar characteristics can be developed for axial flow machines also. So, uh, so these types of characteristics are available for centrifugal mixed as well as axial flow uh, pumps. So once we identify the pump that we want and the requirements, the selection process becomes uh, identical to what we, uh, what we did here. Okay? So we simply go to the dimensionless characteristic and uh, calculate based on these non-dimensional quantity, the quantity that we want, like what we did in this example, where we selected the uh, diameter of the impeller and RPM and the head that could be developed was also evaluated. So in the case of C, if we indeed say that an axial flow machine is what we want, then we would go to the dimensionless characteristics of the axial flow pump and follow the same procedure that we did here. But in order to determine whether to select a mixed flow pump or axial pump or centrifugal pump, we need a quantitative way to, uh, or quantitative manner in which we can uh, decide, okay? And the uh, quantity, the dimensionless quantity that relates all these uh, types of designs is the dimensionless specific speed, which is defined here like this. The quantities on the right hand side are all, all dimensional, but NS itself is dimensionless. That is called the dimensionless specific speed. Okay. So we obtain this by eliminating D between the definition for CH and CQ. Because in general, in, uh, in the case of a pump or when it comes to selecting a pump for any application, normally the head and a discharge, uh, the head and the discharge are usually known. And uh, based on the uh, electric motors that are available in the market, we usually know the permitted range of speed for the electric motor also. Uh, but the size of the impeller is generally not known. So, uh, so from an application point of view, uh, this dimensionless specific speed is probably the best quantitative metric to connect all these three designs. Okay, so uh, what is normally done is once we have the dimensionless uh, characteristics, for the centrifugal, uh, the mixed and the axial flow pump, uh, the value of the dimensional specific speed across each one of these ranges may be evaluated. We know the range of Q uh, <clears throat> and we know the head range. So using the values for known values for head and Q, the uh, dimensional specific speed for each one uh, may be evaluated. And then if you uh, arrange the values for centrifugal uh, mix and, uh, and uh, axial flow, uh, then we begin to see a pattern. Okay? So we can do the same thing for all uh, the designs, centrifugal as well as mixed and uh, axial flow pumps uh, from the dimensionless characteristics. Then the values usually uh, arrange themselves like this. Notice that the centrifugal machines typically have low values for specific speed because the head is high and the flow rate is low. And the mixed flow machines typically have mid-range values because the head and the flow rate are mid-range values. And the axial flow pumps have very high specific speed because the H is very low and the Q is very high. So they usually arrange themselves like this. And you can also see how nicely the uh, blade passage expands as we go from uh, low flow centrifugal uh, pump impeller to a high flow axial pump impeller. So you can see the passage opening up gradually and the specific speed increasing as we go from this design, low head, uh, I'm sorry, high head, low flow rate to medium head, medium flow rate to uh, high flow rate, low head type of uh, design. And the specific speed comes out uh, to be like this, okay? So here you see the dimensionless characteristics of the three uh, types of pump. So you can see, uh, I mean, these are not to scale, but uh, the dimensionless characteristics of uh, all these pumps are available. And uh, you can see that the efficiency for the mixed and the axial flow pumps uh, occurs closer to the maximum value of flow rate when compared to the centrifugal machine, 
where the efficient maximum efficiency or the best efficiency point is closer to the mid range of uh, values for the uh, flow rate and the variation of power uh, it increases monotonically for the centrifugal and the mixed flow machine but it is seen that the power actually decreases with flow rate for an axial mm -hmm. flow machine okay, so these are interesting trends that must be uh, kept in mind but the most important thing is the uh, pump selection for a given uh, q and h we decide which one we want we can actually uh, evaluate ns for each one of the designs so we select a, a centrifugal impeller we know the range of uh, uh, values for specific speed so we calculate the rpm and the impeller diameter assuming it is a centrifugal pump then we repeat it for a mixed flow pump and uh, do the same thing for an axial flow pump and then based on the values that we get for the uh, for the rpm and the diameter of the impeller uh, we select the uh, pump that we want based on how reasonable and physically realistic these values appear to be okay so we make the uh, best choice for the pump for the given quantities okay? by uh, selecting by evaluating ns for each one of this and then going into the dimensionless uh, characteristics and calculating the uh, impeller uh, impeller diameter and the rpm and then choosing the best design so the procedure remains the same the only thing we do now is evaluate this ns which connects all the three designs of pumps namely centrifugal uh, mixed and axial flow pump so what we have outlined here is only a, a, a procedure for selecting pumps. The actual process is somewhat more involved than what we have, uh, what we have given here. And it would be uh, right and proper to have such a discussion in a full-fledged course on turbo machine. And as I said in the uh, introductory lecture, uh, here the objective is not to uh, select pumps or turbines uh, for a particular requirement. But we outline the general procedure so that you have a basic understanding of the procedure. And when you do a, a full-fledged course on turbo machines, you will know all these details, uh, uh, all these concepts, and then you can work out the details.